Welcome back to our home renovation remodel thingy, whatever we're calling it. This time we're going to get started on the island, which goes, you know, somewhere in, uh, in this area right here. Okay, as we pan down inside the little model there, there is that wall. And then right in front of it is this uh, the island, which is blocked by this other wall. Boom. <laughs> so this is exactly where we're standing right now. We're standing kind of like right about there. So this face of the island, we have two things going on. We have this unit here, which is a fridge. It's a two drawer fridge, which is what this box is here. And this is some, uh, some cabinets with some pull out drawers and all that. If we spin this thing around to the other side, this is the side that's going to be facing yeah, the range. We got a couple of uh, units, I guess. We got a couple of drawers and a little door thing you can put stuff behind. You know what? It's a cabinet hole. <laughs> And then the, uh, the ends are these two panels. So we have a V-groove paneling on the end with a uh, frame panel kind of thing. And that's repeated up in here. On this end, we'll have a leg assembly, which I apparently fell off my model. So the finish on the island has kind of evolved over time. It was originally just going to be white painted like everything else in here. And then we thought maybe having a contrasting thing might be kind of nice. So we decided that wood would be kind of nice and Lindsay likes walnuts. So she thought that walnut for the island as well as the breakfast nook area would be kind of nice. And then um, as I was about to start making out a walnut, she decided that a lighter wood, specifically light like um, white oak that the floor is made out of might be a nicer thing. So we're going to go find some white oak to make island cabinets out of first and then we'll chop it up. Here we go. <laughs> that was heavy. Ah, <laughs> oh. man, that's gorgeous. Look at the figure around these things. We're still getting some curl around there, but now we're starting to see a little bit of ray flecking around there. If we come down here, you can see some more, a little bit of ray fleck around there. And I think as we pull back this one, we should be through most of this stuff, so things are going to get a lot clearer here, I think. You can see where I, uh, I paused to move the camera.
Ooh, that's cool. Getting really clear, really clear. And I got a couple of the remnants of those two limbs right there. And we got some ray fleck emanating there from this limb here. Okay, so here is the uh, the material that we're going to use. Yep, we're going to make this uh, out of slabs, and I'm going to build this probably differently than uh, the most people would. I think more traditionally, a cabinet maker type person would build, you know, their set of cabinets, put them all together, and then slap some end panels on those cabinets, and that's how they build this kind of thing. I'm going to do the other way around. I'm going to build some end panels and I'm going to build cabinets in between them. And the biggest reason for that is that my corners, my posts or my legs are going to be one piece. They're not going to be two faces, you know, mitered together. So the leg will be integral to each face. So on one side is four inches deep. That's the end panel side. And then on the cabinet side is two inches wide. So out of here, if I get a piece that finishes at two inches thick, and four inches wide. Four of those, those would be the four corners of the end panels and the four styles, outside styles of the two uh, bays or runs of cabinets. So for the leg stock, I'm gonna want something uh, riffs on. We covered this in pretty big detail back when I did the, the first the flooring videos. So this one over here is gonna be a plain sawn or flat sawn. You can see you have all of these cathedral patterns, all these, you know, wood green looking things. <laughs> so you got all those going on in there. This one here, this is quarter sawn. So this one you can see all of the ray flex. These are the medullary rays of the tree. The rays that go from the center of the tree out to the outside and carry nutrients in and out versus the growth, the grain, which goes up and down, which carries things up and down the tree. This one here, is rift sawn, so fairly similar to quarter sawn as far as the uh, sort of grain lines go. They are straight all the way down, but they don't have the ray fleck exposed in the surface. So I want my growth rings running diagonal across my piece. That's going to give me straight grain on both uh, faces or the face and the edge. So as I'm looking through here, I want to find something that's got a lot of that in here, and it looks like down here is going to be pretty well the best. I could probably get some out of here too. So maybe these two for starters. We'll take a look at those. Okay, so from this crack to the sapwood, that should be two. And then I need a finished length of 36. So I'll go a little longer here. And right there is uh, whatever. One pair. One pair of legs. Okay, so we got those two legs right there. I think this is probably going to be two legs, and this will be a pair of rails. So I'm going to go to the next slab and see what we got. Okay, so that's another two legs there, or rails, I guess. They're all kind of the same size. And that leaves you with this nice long clear section right here. And what that's going to be, it'll be a little further along in the build, but it's going to be the pair of rails that connect the end cap assembly 
to uh, the actual cabinets, this piece right here. And those are going to be three and three quarter each. Uh, I, mean, I, got, I can get both of them out of here. And they have to be uh, 50 long. And I got more than that here. So I think I'm just going to continue this line basically all the way down here. This will be here. There's those rails. All right, I think that's where I'm going to start for now. I still need all of the V board paneling stock, which I can choose to either get out of this stuff, I can resaw it and I can get two pieces out of the thickness, or I have the whole stack of like extra uh, flooring that I have still from when I made flooring that I can use. I think for now, I'm going to start chopping all these chunks out of here, get them into the shop and start making the actual uh, frame assemblies and we can go from there. So there's the stock for the styles. As you can see, the growth rings are running kind of at diagonal here. And because they're running at diagonal, they're going to present to the surface at their rifts on orientation. So you can see we have nice straight grain here. And because they're also presenting at a 45 to the edge, this edge matches. It is also rifts on a nice straight grain. And one thing you'll notice on this one is that on this edge, the growth rings are starting to get more vertical or if it was laying like this as it was, they were horizontal. This area over here was plain sawn. The edge of a plain sawn board is quarter sawn. So this is getting really close to quarter sawn. So you can see on this one, we're starting to see some of the ray fleck. That's these kind of like light silver looking bands here. We're not perfectly quarter sawn, so the bands are pretty small, but it's not a look I'm going for for this. So this is gonna be my outside face and this will go inside towards all the paneling. But anyway, with the uh, styles out of the way, I'm going to start breaking down the stock for the rails. Yeah, our frame stock is all prepped. It's all cut to length and ready to go for some joinery. 
And for that, we're going to do integral Morrison tenon because, uh, well, this thing is fast and it's efficient, but it's the biggest downside of this thing is it's incredibly boring and I am so sick of this thing now. Uh, and I really want to do something a little more exciting. I could use that and this would take me 10 minutes. I'm going to do the integral mores in 10, which is going to take me a few hours, but I'm actually going to enjoy those few hours. And just the, the tenon going into the mortise at the end is that's all I want. <laughs> I've had this for 10 years now, and how often do you see me use this? Not that often, because it's boring. <laughs> so we're going to do uh, got the mortise right here. I'm going to get that set up, and then I already got my mortise sizes laid out onto my style, so we'll get the, the mortises cut first, and then we'll cut our tenons to fit the mortises. Okay, I'm going to use a three-quarter inch chisel today for this. Oop, there's the auger. And then I'm just going to set my depth stop here, go into that line there.
So that was a nice, pleasant change of pace. Now we got our big, giant frames ready to go for some uh, paneling to go in there. So that's what I'm going to start working on next. And uh, as I was doing this, I was kind of thinking about the panels that I want to have in here. And the look that I want to go for those is to have them be plain sawn. So it has some like very consistent cathedrals that kind of come out to small sections of rift grain. And to do that, to accomplish that, this, this, whatever, this tree that this came out of was too big. <laughs> I, can't, I can't get small enough cathedrals out of the stock that I have because this tree was too big for that. So we're going to go out in the barn and we'll go through the white oak that I have left over from the flooring and we'll see if we can get some pieces out of that that's going to work for what I have in my head. And we need 12 pieces that are whatever this is, 28 inches long, something like that. So I should be able to get three pieces out of each board out there. So that's uh, what, four boards that we have to go find? To the barn! Okay, this stack is what's left over from... Uh, making all the flooring. So I went through my giant stack and I pulled out anything that was rifts on because that's the grain orientation I wanted for the flooring. So this should be all uh, plain sawn and there's probably some quarter sawn in here. I ended up making a lot of uh, quarter sawn flooring just so I had, uh, I wasn't gonna have enough rifts on material anyway. So I did make some quarter sawn. So there's probably not too much quarter sawn left in here, but there is a lot of plain sawn which is perfect because uh, that's, that's more or less what I'm looking for right now. And this first board is kind of a good and kind of a bad example of what I'm looking for. I'm looking for those characteristic cathedrals that come out into some rifts on area, which is going to be straight grain for a border. And this is a bad example because this is from the, the outside log, so this is all sapwood. I don't really want to include sapwood in the look of this thing, but this is the exact look that I want. Cathedrals flanked by straight green. So like stereotypical plain sawn material. Okay, I think uh, I think I pulled enough. We'll see uh, how this goes. I can always come back and dig further and grab some more. And then we'll be back for that, uh, that entire pallet because that's going to be the, uh, the stock for all the drawer boxes. So we'll come back to this thing. In a, in a, it'll be a few episodes, but the whole pallet's coming to the shop eventually to turn to drawers. So far, I'm only getting two pieces out of every board because by the time I get down to the end, it's kind of like this, and I get into a bunch of sapwood and bark in this case. So this will be a this will be a drawer box someday. And I figure, why bring all this stuff down to the shop only to bring the offcuts back here when I can just rough cut them all here and leave the offcuts here? It's perfect. This was not as good. It's got cathedrals along one edge, but if they're not centered, and I won't be able to center them. Yeah. That one's going back in the pile. It's too asymmetrical. This has got some weird big gold knot thing here. Okay, this is a maybe, <laughs> but that should be a one good one right there. So as I further process these, I do want to work on getting my cathedral centered in the panel. I don't want to just come over here and rip my board out of it because I don't want my cathedrals off center. So I'm going to work on centering up this, uh, this line through the middle here. So that's my sort of center line of the panel right through here. That's kind of at the peak of the cathedrals on the top and the bottom. Then I'll come over my half distance in either way 
and that'll be my new edges. I, mean, I guess technically I only need one line because uh, that could be my new edge and then I'll just rip it to width. So I'll just draw one line from now on. Save myself some work. Here's my first layout. This is going to be for the one that's more visible as the side that's like completely exposed. The other one's going to be the one under the countertop. So I'm really happy with this. I think the layout worked out really well. And one thing that I didn't mention before is that because we're going to be cutting, you know, a whole tongue on here, I've offset my center uh, by a quarter inch to make up for it. So these are all off center a little bit. This was the most obvious. I have way more straight green material on this side than on that side. And then one other little thing is that the first board is going to be a double tongue. So I left this one wider. I want to have a tongue on both ends to go into the styles of the uh, frame assembly thing. And this is the layout for the other one that's going to be underneath the uh, countertop. These are the less pretty boards. I already have some that I completely rejected. And to be honest, I'm still not super thrilled with this. The grain is just, it's all over the place. I'm not hugely in love with this. So I went out and grabbed another board. This should give me at least, should give me two that are decent. And I can swap those into this layout here and uh, see what happens. I mean, this panel is not gonna be super visible, but you'll still be able to see it a little bit, so. I kind of want to make it look at least somewhat as nice as the other one. Okay, so here is the, uh, the two new ones that I just made. Those are uh, a lot more of what I had in mind. So I think I'm going to drop this guy. I don't want all those little knots. And then uh, the, the grain on these are so weird. <laughs> I still... I think I'll still use them, but this one's like a little too crazy, so maybe we'll just swap that guy in. And that'll be something more like what the panel's gonna be. Let's make some V groove paneling stuff next. I'm gonna set the groove cutter up here first, then I have it set from before when I was making uh, 5 8 inch thick paneling. Uh, this stuff is 11? No. This stuff is 13 sixteenths, so I can actually make my, uh, my tongue thicker than it has set here. So this is a two-piece cutter. You have like a bottom thing, and then you got a bunch of shims you can put in the middle to uh, make the tongue, or in this case, the groove, wider or narrower. And you just do that by stacking these washers, and then there are some shims on there too, if you want to get all crazy. I think I'll just leave the shims off and put that like that. Probably go wider than this in all reality, but let's see. Eight millimeters. Oof. Okay. Good enough. That's five sixteenths ish. Almost 5 sixteenths. Good enough. Now, one pretty important thing about this whole thing is having a bunch of extra pieces for setup. So even though you probably thought, oh, you made a bunch of extra stuff you're not going to use, you, you kind of need to make extra things so you can test all this stuff and get your setup figured out. And really the, uh, the setup here is more 
more or less how deep of a v-groove do you want the higher you put the bit the deeper the v-groove is going to be and then you, you know, maybe you want your tongue and groove to be centered although in this case it doesn't matter because there's only one you know show side we're only putting a v on uh on one face so i'm going to go with a little bit of a conservative depth on the v-groove for now and then we can always step it down deeper uh, later on Yeah, I want to line my fence up with the uh, the furthest that the bit will come out on the flat area here. Somewhere around there. Something, something like that. If the bit protrudes further than the fence, the outfeed fence needs to move out, kind of like a jointer to pick up the difference. Or you can leave it alone and just have some snipe. <laughs> but that's going to be the uh, the starting position, and then we'll uh, let's just run the board and see you know how it looks at this point. Okay, let's see how this is looking here. And actually this is not bad <laughs> for the first try. I need to just move it just a tiny bit. The tenon is a little too low. It's contacting the bottom of that groove there. So I just need to raise the cutter just a hair. The tenon size is pretty darn good. It's maybe a little bit on the loose side, but I think I'll just bump it up a little bit. Oops. <laughs> and then we'll run a whole test length and do a test fit.
I would say I'm pretty happy with that. And then while we have our expansion gap in there, it looks something like that. That's not bad. That's pretty quick for setup. I think there's just enough play in the thickness of that tongue and that groove to make this slide together pretty nicely and easily. So I'd say my setup is good. Right now I have it set up that the, uh, the cutter is moving a sixteenth of an inch of material off the width. So now I'm going to rip my boards down to my final width plus the material I'm going to remove <laughs> plus this tongue, you know, minus the uh, expansion gap I want to have. And then whoosh, I can run them all. All the tongues. Okay, there's the uh, the main panel, the show panel. The other one is uh, still over there. But this is how this one is uh, going to look. So I can yeah, I can work on getting these things cut to size. I need a tongue on the bottoms. I need some grooves in the frames. But before I get to that, I want to add a little material onto the tongues that will go into the uh, the styles. By the time we have, you know, the 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 show area here, but that's all the material that's going to be into the style, which is not, I don't feel like that's enough, so I'm going to add a little material onto the sides of the tongues, make these outside tongues a bit longer, and then we can move on from here. So the next thing on the list is going to be to create a matching tongue on the bottom here. That's going to allow us to go down into the, uh, the bottom rail and the top rail. And it'll make it a lot cleaner uh, where the V-groove actually intersects that rail. Because if you just do like a fully housed um, groove for this, where the groove is the thickest of the piece, you're going to have a hole, which will look kind of weird. So this is sort of the finished look that you'll actually see when you're looking down there. I think we'll probably set it back maybe a quarter inch from the face. And you'll have an actual stop point where this V-groove notch area is filled with something, which is actually the lower rail. So we got to cut some tongues on here, or basically little tenons. And I set these up to be an inch long, so I need to put a half inch tongue on each end. So I'm going to set my fence here to 3 eighths plus an eighth inch blade. That's a half inch long tongue. Okay, now we got our panel stock all prepped. We gotta prep the frames to receive said panel stock. Ugh. So we need to make some grooves. And one thing I do, because I don't trust myself, as, as we all know, is that I mark and label my parts really well so I don't cut these things in the wrong place. So I had the faces all marked so I know which face I'll be referencing off of. And I have a mark, just like a squiggly line kind of thing on all the edges that are actually going to receive those grooves because the last thing I want to do is put a groove here <laughs> or here. If I pull it up here or down here, that doesn't really matter. Those are never going to be seen, but these ones would be pretty catastrophic. So I've been kind of going back and forth on where 
in the uh, the frame I want these to sit. All of the other ones with the faux V paneling is they're set back an eighth of an inch, so it would be like that. I think on this one because this is actual like wood. I don't know why that matters, but because it's actually wood and stuff, I'm gonna go more like this. I think that is uh, three sixteenths of an inch. I think going to a full quarter might be a little bit too. I don't know. That just feels a little too bulky to me, or I don't know, less fine, less refined, something like that. I think an eighth just looks too small on this for the scale of how big these rails are. I think that's, I guess, a nice position right there. So I need to start my groove this far back, which is uh, 7 sixteenths ish or a little heavy. And because I'm lazy, I'm just going to use the uh, single ripping blade in the saw for this, then switch it out to a dado blade. This would be three passes to make that. And the only other thing I need to remember is that I have two different lengths that I need to do, but I guess I could just make one. Yeah, I guess I could just make one. So I have the tongues on the edges that can go in they don't have to be as deep, and then I have a half inch here for the bottom, which I think I could make them two different depths for the style versus the rails, but I don't know. We'll see what I'll do. Maybe I'll make two different depths. I don't know. Who cares? Who cares? <laughs> as long as it fits, that's all that matters. I have just a little bit of junk right here to clean up real quick on this tenon. And then I have a router plane set to what is the uh, actual finish thickness so I can check and make sure my tenons are the right size. If there's any deviation when I actually form these, this will find that and knock down the high spots.
All right, let's see how this goes. That was pretty nice, actually. Good fit. So I don't think I've talked about this yet, although I might have because I don't really remember because I have like, I think we're shooting three or four videos right now all at once. So I don't remember what I said in what video. <laughs> I saw the comment somewhere that uh, it's a really inefficient way to just build all your stuff like one thing at a time. And uh, that's not what I'm doing. I'm building all these things at the same time. Uh, in parallel the videos are just organized a little better for viewers so they can see one discrete item at a time but anyway <laughs> what uh, what I wanted to mention or touch on was the uh, the idea that you can use slabs for other things than uh, tabletops and as someone who makes furniture uh, I've really gravitated towards using slabs well you know except for these uh, slat things these are just out of boards but um, as someone who has really figured out and embraced the whole grain selection process of uh, furniture making and woodworking you know once you understand how the grain is going to present itself on the surface based off of the growth rings that you see on the end of the board you can select and pick exactly the design and layout of the grain you actually want for what you see in your head. And that's the beauty of making furniture parts out of slabs is that you as a furniture maker get to decide how that, um, that piece of wood is actually cut and brought to its final thing versus a sawyer that's just cutting a board just to cut a board to whatever. It's kind of like the closest analogy that I can get for this is if you uh, go out and buy like a whole side of beef or a whole primal cut of something. You can break that thing down like as a butcher and make whatever the heck you want for meat cuts out of that primal. You know, like we just had a, we just had the holidays. So prime rib or rib roast was, you know, popular. So if you go out and you buy a whole rib roast, you know, you can do a bone in, you can do boneless, you can cut the bones off and tie it back on, you can set the whole thing aside and just cut up into you know steaks at whatever thickness you want. You have the full flexibility to make that thing whatever you want because you're the one creating that end product. And it's not that much different from this. When you look at a big slab of wood and you can be able to select all your furniture parts out of that piece of wood and cut that piece of wood up into exactly what you have in mind. You can lay out your parts in three dimensions. You don't have to just lay out your parts just sitting on the face of the slab. You can lay out your parts in the thickness so you can have parts stacked in the thickness. So if you have a piece of 10 quarter, you can very easily resaw that, get two pieces of book match four quarter out of that. Um, you can do either book match, you can do sequential match, whatever you want. You can rotate the whole piece in the thickness and cut the thing out of bias and adjust your growth rings to get the grain orientation you actually want because you have that thickness. Or, you know, you can get thicker stuff. If you want leg stock, you can get leg stock. If you want leg stock with book mash rail stock right next to it, you can do that too because you have that thickness. There's so much you can do because you, as the furniture maker, you as the woodworker get to decide how that tree is actually cut. And I know one question that uh, some of you are gonna have is gonna do with uh, 
gluing and securing of these uh, V-panel boards. So what we'll do when we do the glue up is we'll put a little bit of glue in the middle of each panel board, kind of like right in there, just to lock it into its position, its position in the rail, and then it'll be able to expand and contract. The, um, the V-panel tongue groove will float, and the, the tongues will float into the rails as well. So that's how we'll deal with wood movement, wood movement in this while still maintaining consistency with the gaps between the boards. The gap width will vary with the seasons, but they will be consistent, so they'll stay the same distance apart relative to each other. Now this one's got a little bit of something going on. What is going on with this one? I don't know what, there's nothing there. Yep, I don't know. Nothing there. Make it just thinner. And going back to the uh, starting with slabs thing, or I guess sawing stuff into slabs, it's really just delayed decision making more than anything. You can make the decision of what you want that piece to become when you're actually ready to make the thing you're going to make uh, out of it. Because at least for me, I didn't know that this was going to become this rail right here when I cut this log. I had no idea. But it worked out perfectly. So that's, uh, <laughs> that's, that's kind of a nice plus. There we go. There's our panel. <laughs> now we can do the actual final test fit and make the whole side panel and see how it's going to look. All right, so here is this one. This is the one you'll uh, actually see because it'll be you know fully exposed. I'm pretty happy with this. Some of these are a little bit weird. The, these boards were kind of squirrely for this, but like this was more what I had in mind with the cathedrals up the center and then falling off to a straight grain on uh, on either side. This one's a little weird too, but I don't know. I think it's. Kind of a fun composure. I think it'll kind of even out once there's some finish on it. And then the other one, that'll be underneath the uh, the countertop, is this guy here. Oh, this, is, this island's not gonna blow away, that's for sure. Holy crap, this is heavy. <laughs> well, there is the, uh, the other side panel, end panel, whatever you wanna call it. We will connect these together and built some cabinets uh, between them. And we got the, uh, the other, the leg, I guess, it's technically an end panel, but we'll call it a leg assembly or something like that that we'll build kind of on the other end. So thank you as always for watching. I greatly appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments on the, the island thing or anything back in the house, anything here in the shop, please feel free to leave me a comment. As always, I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have 
And until next time, <laughs> happy woodworking.